Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you some different techniques that you can use if your kids are going to be home this summer, if you've got some grandkids or whatever. Um, we're going to show you some really fun background techniques that you can use, and then you can paint over it with any kind of black and white of your choosing. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's the man in chat tonight, so if you've got questions while we're painting, you can ask those in chat, and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. I think this is going to be a fun one. Alrighty, so I'm starting out with a 12 by 12 inch canvas. I haven't done anything to it. It's just really, you could use any size canvas you wanted to for this project. And I'm gonna show you a variety of techniques that you can choose to use on this. I've used some of them with our grandson, uh, Liam, when he was uh, two to four-ish. Um, and they work really well with a variety of ages. Um, pretty much as soon as they can start to hold a brush without eating the paint, you can start doing this kind of thing with your kids. Um, so we're going to do a variety of acrylic surface techniques, texture techniques, and I'll go over um, several different ones. We've got 12 different kinds of techniques that you can use on a blank canvas like this with your kids um, that uh, can be a lot of fun. So, um, But we're going to tonight be painting a... Um, sunflower on top of uh, this kind of crazy design that we'll do in our background. So um, it'll be a lot of fun, hopefully. So we'll show you the techniques here in a minute. But for starters, we're just going to be putting a few variety of paints. So I've got, go ahead and show the palette. Yeah, there we go. I've got a variety of paints. And the thing you want to do when you're going to choose your background paints for something like this where you're going to have your child or you are going to be, um, you know, smushing together um, several different colors at once. You want to make sure that you you pick colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. So pick a color scheme that's going to have these colors. And in our case, we're going to go from about here to somewhere in here. So we're picking all these analogous colors that I know are going to blend well together. And that is the key because if I picked a color that was opposite on the color wheel, like say I wanted some greens in here or something like that, and I have these reds, what it's going to do is create a brown or a muddy gray color. And so if you want to keep your colors vibrant you want to pick colors that are close to each other on the color wheel that you know are going to mix well and look good when they're being mixed now even like this is probably too big of a spread because this green and this orange will create a brown so I would stick to like yellow to red like a primary to primary is what I would do so primary to primary red to yellow red to blue like that would be great. Any of these colors are going to look good. And then blue to yellow. Any of these colors are going to look good. So pick within that wedge, pick colors that look good. It can be like like I've got here, just a variety of mixed colors is fine as long as they fall within this window of the primary to primary color on your color wheel. Um, you know that they're going to blend really nicely and make a really pleasing looking um arrangement. Now you can always add more colors on top and that's what we'll do with our subsequent colors, splattering and different other techniques. So it doesn't mean that you only can use these colors. If you want a green later on, we can add it on top of the dry paint. But when we're first mixing all of these colors together, you don't want to have a color in there that you know is going to create any kind of muddiness at all. Otherwise you're going to end up with kind of a mess. And I learned that the hard way because I've done <laughs> with my kids uh, when they were younger, my actual kids, not my grandson. Uh, we have some um, gray eggs that they <laughs> created when they were much younger and they just kept adding other colors and other colors. And so I always, um, I learned the hard way <laughs> to only put out the colors that you know are going to work at first with them, you know, so only put out those colors. And then when you're done with that set of colors, you take them away <laughs> and you put the next colors and do it to yourself too. And you'll have <laughs> better results. Too. All right, let's go ahead and get, get going on here. So the first thing I want to do is just spray this down. And as far as brushes go, you really don't need anything special for this kind of technique. I'm going to use a large filbert. This is the Aspen um, from Princeton 
number 10, but um, you could use a sponge brush. You could use um, an actual sponge. Um, you can use any kind of different um, things. And I'll be showing a, a few techniques that you can use um, if you want to. Um, here, I'm going to show you my flowers and then I'm going to move up. <laughs> they're in my block in my light. Aren't those pretty? We went to a tulip farm this weekend for actually on Easter and um, I posted some pictures on social media and my things, but okay, there we go. Now we don't have so many weird shadows going on um, over here. So, all right, let's go ahead and start with this. So we're going to just throw a bunch of this paint on here. I've sprayed it down with water. You can also spray the back if you want to, but I'm not worried about it drying too fast here in this case, but let's go ahead and spray it one more time. And then I'm just going to take these and place them in different places and j just go straight onto the canvas. Now kind of think about how much you're putting down because you don't, it's it's actually um, pretty amazing how um, far some of these colors can go, especially with heavy body acrylics. If you're using like a craft acrylics, which I probably would use a medium body paint like a... Um, Lipsticks basics or something like that with if I was working with kids because I don't I don't want to spend my you know waste my um, not waste but you know what I mean I don't want to use my super expensive heavy body paints with kids because they're gonna um, they just like to waste paint you know yeah you're gonna go through a lot of your really expensive paint it's like giving and you good sprinkles to your friends. not that this is gonna be is not going to be you know a precious family keepsake but it probably is not going to go in a museum and so you don't need to use like museum quality paints on it um just my opinion so hey real quick uh-huh uh if they're using paper would they still oh. spray it no no don't spray it okay no no just want to make sure yes no because you can yeah yeah you don't want to mm -mm. And then give, giving the kids the uh, good heavy body paints is like giving your friends the good sprinkles during cookie decorating. <laughs> what? Exactly. Hello, Stacy. My <laughs> my friend Stacy. We would we have to limit her sprinkles. <laughs> she <laughs> she does a cookie decorating and she'll have a cookie and she'll put the icing on real careful and then she'll load it about a quarter inch thick with just sprinkles. So, so funny. Somebody asked, could you just name out the colors that you just put on the? What? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm 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 not mentioning. Um, okay, so this one was portrait pink from Liquitex, portrait light portrait pink, and to be exact, medium magenta is these ones. And that's a golden. Um, this one is a Matisse color called Australian Salmon Gum. I, let's put it down here, too. Ash Pink is also a Matisse color here, these ones. And Light Magenta here and there. And let me do another little bit here. I need to put these on fast though because they are going to dry and I'm kind of they're going to start to dry and act, actually end up with like little bits of paint. So that that spraying on the back is really important um, if you're using as many colors as I'm using here. And I'm only going to put a little bit of that bright red down and what I'm going to do is add some white right next to it so that it mixes into a pink because I don't want it to be just red. So I'm going to put a couple of things of white down. And I'm getting to where I probably don't need a ton more. I'm going to put a little bit of magenta next to those two whites because it's also going to be a really bright color. Um, but this is really fun. You can let your, I wouldn't let your kids do this part, but you can, they can watch, you know, obviously, and um, or they can, pick the colors. Yeah. You can, what you can do is set out your colors. This is what I did with Liam when we did, uh, we did a dinosaur project. Um, and I, uh, I might, I'll have Mark pull that up on my phone so I can show you what we did. But um, we did a dinosaur project and he was only, I want to say two and a half, maybe um, when we did it. And um, we did it on really large canvases, and I let him pick what colors he wanted to use, and then I um, kind of curated which ones we put on which canvas so that we didn't have any grays happening, you know, any weird color mixes happening. All right, so let's go ahead and start there and see what we get. So, and this is the fun part of this kind of thing because you, you know, you have all these colors down. I, I don't know. I can't. 
I, it's not very pretty, but that's okay. <laughs> you see all these people with these thumbnails nowadays with all these really beautifully curated um, dots of paint all over the canvas. But, yeah, we didn't get that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. do one more spray of water before we start because I'm kind of lost that and I'm going to wet down my brush so whatever brush you're using just wet it down a little bit and again you could use a sponge if you wanted to wet it down um what go ahead I was going to say usually they probably have already tested it like 10 times before probably. they actually film it yeah. this is first shot first shot okay so I'm going to start with my lighter colors and just kind of start to push those around and then get some more water here and then start to mix and you'll see that some colors will kind of disappear entirely so if you don't want that to happen just kind of brush over them a little bit and move on so once you've got your brush full of paint you can kind of offload it in another area before you go in and go into a fresh color and that'll keep it from polluting everything you know with not polluting but you know what I'm saying like you know, mixing, mixing it. Um, all right. So this color up here, let's go ahead and, Ooh, that's pretty. And you can see, I'm just kind of smushing it around. There's no rhyme or reason, just kind of doing whatever feels good. That looks good. And since I've got yellow here, I'm going to go ahead and get this Indian yellow hue. I forgot to continue to mix. So that was cadmium yellow medium in the corner. This one is uh, cadmium yellow light. And then the red was naphthol crimson. Um, but a naphthol red medium from golden would be equivalent, and then quinacridone magenta. And I think that's all of the ones. Hopefully I mentioned them all. You do want a little bit of depth of color, though, so kind of be sure you kind of have at least one or two colors that have a little bit of darkness to them, and I kind of wish I hadn't put my magenta so close to my... I'm going to put out a little bit more magenta here because I want a little bit of dark something you know in here oh I just got it in my thing there okay well hopefully I... okay so you can see how gummy the paint is getting though you know it's like it's pretty thick right now and so I need to be careful what I do I'm getting some really nice streaks here let's go ahead and mix in that naphthol oh that's a pretty red in it so you can see how really nicely, though, all these colors are going together. We're not getting any weird grays. We're getting all these really nice, bright colors going in here. And it's going to be really pretty for the background of our sunflower. And so you could use any, like I said, any number of colors that, you know, are interesting to you. Let's go ahead and add this bright yellow. This is the cadmium yellow light, so it's got a lot of vibrancy to it. You can see it's a little bit more um, warm or bright, like almost green. Um, this one is Indian yellow hue. This is some more cadmium medium. Let's get into the white here. Mix that with the, my oranges and yellows. Oh, pretty. So, so that, this is that salmon. What? That could be our band name as we're getting older. What? Weird grays. <laughs> <laughs> like weird grace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really, yeah, that's good. That's good. We can play all the retirement homes. <laughs> <laughs> mm, what? The weird craze. Yeah, very good. All right, so here we go. And with kids, of course, they're going to probably overdo so you what you can do is like kind of have an initial couple of colors because what you'll probably end up with and I had to kind of basically just take the brush away from Liam at some point because what he'll do is keep going over it and going over it and going over it and so he'll go you know the kids will tend to tend to over blend so and if we want to have this kind of really fun juicy look then uh, you know as soon as you kind of get it to where you kind of like it just take it away <laughs> you just kind of have to edit for them because they won't edit themselves you know which is fine it's it's just you know personal preference you know I uh, if you want it to kind of have a interesting um, technique or you know background there so look at the, the brush really does matter in this case because um, it's going to create these kind of soft petal like um, formations having this 
Filbert, if I used a different brush that had a little bit more of a, um, of a squared off edge, I'd get a little bit different look. It'd be a little bit more geometric. So, um, but anyhow, I really think I like that. So I'm going to let Mark take that for me and take my brush. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and work on some of these fun techniques that we'll be doing over the top of our, of our background. So you start with that background. Um, you can start with a solid background too. So the fun thing about this is it's up to you how, how involved you get with this, you know, how crazy you um, get with your techniques and different things. So the first one is one you've probably already seen. Um, you're going to be <clears throat> stamping um, onto, and, and really you can use an actual stamp if you want to, but um, basically what you're going to be doing is putting your, um, your paint onto a surface of something. So I'll go ahead and just use um, some fluid paints here. I'm gonna put out some different colors. And we'll try some different things here. It'll be fun. Use some teal. That one was aqua green light. That one is light ultramarine or Australian sky blue, but basically it's ultramarine blue and plus white. This is cerulean blue. I'm gonna again kind of do colors that sort of go together. Let's do an Australian yellow green over here. Whoop, if we can get it to come out. There we go. And then I'll do another layer that's got some yellows. So this is the blue to yellow color wheel, you know. I'm just putting up different colors. And then I might put out some other colors, but we'll start with these ones and see what we think. I might maybe put out some Australian Sienna because that's got a kind of a golden. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. And these are fluid paints, but you can use your heavy body acrylics for this too. It doesn't matter. So for stamping, I'm going to just grab any brush really. Um, this is the blender here. And I'm going to grab some paint and I'm going to lightly paint over and I want to just kind of maybe figure out the area that I have <laughs> to paint on here and kind of paint in that. Um, I can do multiple colors. So if I want to do some other things on here, I can kind of dab on other colors. But basically, um, just putting on and your paint straight onto a surface and any kind of textured surface will do. Oh, I ended up with a little bit of a, of a stencil happening there too, which I didn't intend, but okay. So when you're, st when you're stamping, you just want to set it down really carefully, straight down, press lightly, don't move it at all, and then lift it straight off. So there's stamping. Um, we got, uh, we got a little bit off center, but you get the idea. Um, so I use different techniques you can, or different textures, all kinds of different things that you can use for this. We'll use some plastic wrap down here um, later, and I'll show you what that looks like. I thought I had already, uh, I was going to do plastic wrap on that one, but let's go ahead and do a little bit um, at the top with this one. You can see how we do, like when we do multiple ones. So let's do some green on this one, and we'll just do kind of a stripe across here. And stick it up there. Now we can see what we're doing. Boop. All right. So you can see different textures, different things on top of your paint. You can do this on your dried paint. You can do it on a, you know, a white canvas. Like this is obviously what it would look like on a white canvas. Um, you can also use it to stencil through if it's, if it's um, not too thick like this one is is pretty thick to try to stencil through but this one probably would work and you would lay your um, lay it down and then paint through it and let the paint kind of go through the holes um, so let's show you that so with the stencil I've got a couple different stencils here and the way I like to stencil is using a 
foam pouncer of some sort that just seems to work the best. Wet it down just a little bit, get a little bit of color. Let's go ahead and get some of this blue here. And the thing you want to do with your stencil is to not overload your stencil. So dab it off on a paper towel and then you're going to be tapping quite a bit. <laughs> tapa tapa. And make sure you can you can also add a little bit of um, stencil um, adhesive if you're worried about the stencil um, lifting or moving like if you've got a large area that you're covering um, but mostly usually for a small area I can just you know hold it in place stencil works great also for mediums so I'm going to use it with maybe this one here the smaller one and I'll show you what it looks like to use a medium on on here and we're going to do that one down here so we're going to use a gel paste medium this is coarse modeling paste and just a palette knife and i'm going to go over this little area with that and I don't know if it'll dry in time for us to actually paint over it, but what happens is it goes through that stencil and you end up with a little raised area. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. You can see little raised area. You can also obviously use your modeling paste with, um, and make sure you wipe your stencil off immediately. Otherwise you're going to end up with it drying on there. You can also just use a palette knife. Um, I'll use fine pumice gel here. And each of these mediums that you can get from um, Golden, Liquitex, different ones. This one's fiber paste. They all have a little bit of different texture, but you basically can use them pretty much in the same way. So um, they're fairly interchangeable. This one is a fine pumice gel and um, it actually works really well for the stencils like this coarse modeling paste you'll end up with these raised peaks um, through your stencil but if I was to use the fine pumice gel you'd get a little bit smoother application so let's just go ahead and kind of put this on sort of with my palette knife and I can get some texture in it. I can go back through it and scrape through it. I can do all kinds of number of things, but I'll leave that like that and let that dry and we'll see if we can get it to dry in time. We can, I'll show you what it looks like when you paint over it because each one of these will absorb the paint in different ways and you can also mix paint with them. So there's just an endless number of things that you can do even with just one little um, <clears throat> texture paste. I don't use them a lot on my show because they take a while to dry. So it would be something that you could maybe do with your child in two parts or, you know, with yourself if you're just doing it on your own. Um, but, you know, do it the day before and then come back and paint over it the next day. So we could have done this on our canvas before we did our painting today. And then we would have had these kind of textured areas that would catch the paint and pull the paint and do kind of different things. And we'd see this just really light textured um, areas underneath. And I have done a couple of videos with texture. One that comes to mind is my tree autumn, autumn tree with texture or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but very simple, just a tree with, but the background was all these kind of textured pastes and everything. All right, so let's do Scrimpedo. This is one of my favorite um, ones. I don't do this often enough, and I, I really love the look of it. Whenever I see an artist that has done this, I just think it's so fun. And um, you do want to have a heavier body acrylic for it, so I'll go ahead and use this light magenta because I have it handy here. I'm going to put it out on my palette. And I'm going to put it on fairly thick. So with Graffito, you need it to be thick. We could have used our canvas, actually, um, that was fresh with paint uh, to show you. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this on. And you can do it in a, you know, in a certain area. Like I've seen people just, like, paint on a, a flower or something like that or, or a leaf. And then they'll scrap, scrape through just that section, you know. Um, so I'm going to do this whole thing. But this brush here actually 
this is the blender. It actually has this kind of sharp wedgy like um, tip on it, which is perfect for scraffito. Um, so you can use it to scrape through the wet paint. Um, also a just a regular pencil works, so I can grab a pencil. Now the pencil will show a little bit of marks through, but you know if the, if you want that, that's fine. Um, it's just another option. And then the other thing that you can use is like a ballpoint pen or a, um, a little stylus tool, like a nail stylus tool. And the stylus tool, I think, will be give you the finest line, the more the more controlled line. Um, this one you can use to get like thicker scrapes through. You can use the back end of a brush. You can basically use anything that is firm, um, you know, hard pencil. Um, yeah, you don't you don't want like an eraser or something like that, but just like something, some sort of hard tool that you can scrape through your paint. And it actually is really effective if you have an, a contrasting color underneath. So if I had painted the background with like a dark, darker version and then scrape through, you can really see it um, even more when you do that. Um, and I probably should have used a darker color so you could see the effect a little bit easier, but you get the idea. All right, so for these three, I'm going to go ahead and paint these three in kind of all at once, and then we will um, go over them. So I'm going to do the alcohol first, and with alcohol, you want your paint thinned out quite a bit. The alcohol is going to react with the water, so you need to have um, a fairly good amount of water in your paint. For this to work and the same thing with the salt you kind of can't it doesn't really work if your paint is too thick so I'm gonna go ahead and do like that and that actually looks pretty good you kind of can look at it from the side you want just a slight sheen but without it being too super wet um, let me go ahead and do I can do a different color let's do the screen for the salt technique I've used the salt technique and other videos in the past, so I'm going to leave the salt to dry just a little bit. I think the alcohol one's ready to go. You just don't want it sopping wet, but you still should be able to see a little bit of a shine. I've got a little bit of rubbing alcohol. This is just regular rubbing alcohol, um, and I've got it in this little bottle. You can use a spray if you wanted to. Okay, I'll just do three little drops there and see what happens. You can see it's already starting to create these little rings. I may have waited too long on it. It's also absorbing. It depends on the paper too. Let's go ahead and put the salt on our salt one before it dries too. So salt, this is just margarita salt. I like the thicker salts like the margarita salt better than the t fine table salt, especially with acrylics. I think with watercolor, it probably doesn't matter as much, but with acrylics, it seems like it works better if the paint is a little bit more, a um, little bit more um, thinned out. Not too wet, though, because if it's too wet, it will just soak up all of the... Um, moisture out of the salt and it won't show up. I'm going to go ahead and do another layer on this uh, alcohol here with a darker blue and maybe we can get that turquoise to show through when we drip onto it. Let's do it a little bit closer to, ooh, there we go. We got some good, now we're seeing it. Now we're seeing it. I think it just needed a different background so you could see it. Okay, there we go. So now we've got that alcohol technique showing up there. But if you're, okay, so there we go. So that's really neat. That's one of my favorite techniques with um, with these kind of weird techniques that you can do. I love the way the alcohol looks on there. And then, of course, we've done splattering multiple times. Um, let's go ahead and paint in our background here. Paint it in with... 
So I'll do splatters on my wet paint and then I'll let it dry and then we'll do some splatters again with the dry paint and you'll see the difference. So on wet paint, if we splatter, I need to let that dry for a minute. Um, we'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and, I know, let's go ahead and do this plastic wrap technique. So I'm gonna get the, maybe get a little bit of the cadmium red and the magenta here. Trying to keep that salt out of everything. It's getting everywhere. All right, so let's do the plastic wrap here. This is another one that works best if the paint is a little bit fluid. So you just add a little bit of water to your paint and use any kind of regular old plastic wrap. I couldn't find my clear, so it's green. It's green. I have no idea what happened to my white plastic or a regular clear plastic wrap but I'm just gonna set that over the top and if it's got any kind of folds in it which you kind of want I'm just gonna set that down let it set for a minute you don't have to let it dry you just lift it right off and it creates textures can you see that and let's go ahead and do it again over the top when it we'll do a second layer over it um, I, f I feel like it probably would have worked better if we had painted the backgrounds on these because some of them are not showing up and that one's probably one that would look better with a darker a darker thing going on. But let's go ahead and splatter on here. So I've got a, a little bit of my paint on there and I don't know if this is going to work on paper, so we'll see. It works on canvas really well, more than you want it to, but I'm going to splatter over the top of my wet paint there that's that's working you can start to see what it does it actually lifts it it kind of washes it off the canvas so we'll let that dry a little bit longer let the background dry and the water will still be wet and then we can lift off those wet areas all right, let's do our sponge. Now we've done sponge before. We did sponge a couple weeks ago, so you've seen this one before, but I wanted to mention it because it is really a great one to do for backgrounds and things. I'm gonna get just a couple colors on here, a couple different colors, and you're just gonna wanna tap and create interesting textures right there. Nice, okay. Yeah, that plastic wrap needs to be done again because it it's kind of like the alcohol. It doesn't show up very good without a dark background. Um, oh, I, I put stamp twice, so I have a place for something else <laughs> to go here. What else did I have written down? I had a bunch of different ones, and I was cutting them short to... Um, Well, we'll just keep going here. All right, so so similar to the um, plastic wrap, um, you can use a paper towel. And I'm just going to get one out of my one out of my trash. It's already dirty. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Just not use a brand, brand new fresh one. Okay, so you're gonna, with a paper towel, it's similar to the stamp um, sponge. You want to, what you're wanting to do is create kind of some interesting textures and folds. And you're gonna pick up your paint on there. Let's get a couple colors. And dab on with the paper towel and just kind of turn it and there we go. See that? So it's similar to the sponge. You get different different um, looks and you can go over the wet paint like we did here with the plastic wrap and you can lay down some paint and then dab over it and remove paint from it. Um, or you can lay down paint like we just did on this one. So you can do either one. Um, and then let's get some glaze. 
Got some gloss gel. I'm going to add a little bit of paint to it. So let's add some aqua color. This is gloss gel. You can use, this one's kind of a gel, a medium textured gel. You can use a, any kind of different kinds, but basically what you're going to do is use your palette knife and go over. And I've used this on ocean waves and things before. You've probably seen some of those when we've done palette knives. We'll use this glaze um, and create these beautiful soft textures that are transparent. Really pretty. So we would we can put that down, we can paint over it, we can do this multiple times with our ocean textures. What we, we did was we painted rocks and things and then we put this over the top as if it was like water. Um, it looks great over the top. So you can use this in combination with any of these other techniques and lay this would be, I put this one last because this is kind of like the final layer. Um, I would put this on top of any of these other ones and it creates a whole nother layer of interest to what you're doing. Um, I wish I had one of my stamps, my actual stamps. They're all up in my um, cabinet. Let's do this one again because I'm not happy with the way that looks. Um, we'll do the plastic wrap again and we'll use a darker color over the top of it. So let's use this Australian gold over the top and we'll lay the plastic wrap down again and see what we get. It's, it's really cool when you get it to work right. Okay, that worked a little bit. Yeah, you get a little bit better idea of kind of the kind of textures. You can look, almost looks like paper. Um, yeah, leathery. Um, and then you can also kind of do, you can actually add, add paint. Well, let's go ahead and just, we'll use it over here and we'll use it like a, like a brush next to our paper towel. Yeah, like a sponge. So there is um, plastic wrap. I'm going to put that in there. Yes. Paper towel, gel glaze, sponge, plastic wrap, and then stamping. Um, one of my favorite things to use for stamping is bubble wrap. You've seen that, so that would work for that one. I probably was planning on using it down there, but I kind of like to, I like actually seeing the different mm -hmm. techniques cause, so that you can see this is much more geometric yeah. um, in the way it works. The so sponge is probably the softest, more round than paper towel, than your plastic wrap, and you get all these different textures using that. This is actually pretty dry. So let's go ahead and paint just a little bit of, of a thin wash over the top of it. And we'll get an idea of what that looks like with a little color on it. I actually don't think I want that color. I want uh, one that we haven't used. So let's use this green here. Maybe a little bit of the yellow. You can see now how, and then what you can do is take a paper towel and dab off and it leaves the raised bits a different color from the dark bits. And you can go back in and do this multiple times. It works really well for like staining certain areas, um, wood grains, things like that. It's really fun. All right, so let's see. This is mostly dry. Oops, I forgot to take off our splatter. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we got it in time. Our water should still be, oh yeah, look at that. So we got nice, um, we kind of got a little bit of runoff with that was still wet, but you can see where we splattered um, the little circles there. And then let's go ahead and splatter again with another color. With splattering, you want to thin out your paint so that it just comes off your, your brush with just a bare little bit of, of a tap. 
If you don't, if it doesn't come off easily, then you just need to add a little bit more water to it. The more water, the biggest, bigger the splatters though. So if you want really, really big splatters, you go really watery, maybe add a little bit of gel medium or, or glazing medium just to make it stick really well. Cause if you water it down too much, you're, you're gonna end up with um, a soppiness, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, and it may not stick very well if you paint over the top of it, so. All right, so those are just some different things that you can do, you know, and you can let your mind go wild and use, you know, use these in conjunction and um, do all kinds of different combos of techniques using these different um, tools. I would say just kind of use what you've got and, um, you know, raid your kitchen for interesting sponges and You'd be surprised with kind of the, you'll start to see textures and everything once you start to do this kind of stuff. Once you start to paint with things, you're going to be like at the dollar store going, ooh, that would make, <laughs> that's, at least I do. I don't know if you're like me, but <laughs> it's kind of like. Picture in laws. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you can also use paper. I didn't show paper, but um, you can use uh, papers and different things and um, paste those on using your um, gloss medium or matte mediums. Um, they make great like glue. You can stick all kinds of different papers um, on to your surface of your canvas too, let it dry and then paint over it. So lots and lots of different fun things that you can do. Let me go ahead and well, let me do it on canvas to, or on camera so you can see the reveal. But um, basically, I usually use a paper towel because it, it can be kind of um, actually, be good manicure. You know, it's a salt scrub for your hand. Here, <laughs> you're getting going to take off the first surface layer of your fingertips there. But basically, you're seeing just little. And again, it works better. Um, I find with very watery, kind of watercolor type techniques. But I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. We may have waited a little bit long for it. I don't know. There's kind of a happy, like a perfect little scenario where it works really well. But you can kind of see that there's this kind of nice light speckling that happens. And with watercolor, the effect is much more pronounced because you're getting um, much more of like a blooming thing that happens around the salt. But there's all of our different things. So there's the stamping, stencil, scraffito. It's still wet. It's with that thicker paint, splattering, salt, alcohol, salt. We I did with Liam um, recently. He loved it. We used watercolors though. Um, gel paste medium, plastic wrap, sponge, gel glaze, paper towel, and stamping plastic wrap. All right. So lots of fun, different techniques. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. And let's go ahead and go back to our canvas here. And <clears throat> I think all I'm gonna do is just do a little bit of splattering. Maybe um, let's do some yellow. And this is what I did with Liam when we did the dinosaurs. We just did a big, you know, lot of um, background and then we just splattered over it. Very simple. It was super easy. Um, he loved the splattering too. So, and we used, um, if you're doing it with kids, you can, you can hold it for them and let them tap it with another, another object and just have them hit it, you know, and then you can move it around and that way you can kind of control where it goes. Cause otherwise they're going to be hitting the canvas with it if you let them do it themselves. So, um, you hold it over kind of the area where you want it to go and let them tap it with a, of another brush or something like that. Okay. So let me have that. We'll just dry that really quick. <laughs> I should have done that while we were doing their splattering, but <laughs> Do yeah, can you dry that for me? Sure. Please, thank you. All right. I'm going to clean up my workspace because i got a ton of stuff in my way here. And when we get to doing the, um, the actual um, flower here, I'll show you how to draw your sunflower. 
Um, we're going to keep it fairly simple, but if you want to use a traceable, what you'll want to get is some sort of um, transfer medium. And so what you can do is um, print out any, any kind of black and white drawing. Um, really doesn't even have to be black and white. It can just be any kind of image that you want to outline onto your canvas and then grab yourself some transfer paper. I like the Sorrel brand because it's wax free so it doesn't leave a residue on it. Easy to paint over and it's got different colors in the multi-pack. I think it's in my Amazon shop link down below if you want to grab some but basically you take your drawing and you set the transfer paper down face down onto the um, canvas, put your image on top that you're tracing and then trace it with a hard um, pencil or a stylus tool of some sort and then just make sure that you don't um, move it at all while you're doing it so you can tape it down if it if it helps. I do have a, a video in my beginner series. I think it's the bird video that shows how to use a traceable um, a little bit more in depth if that's something that you're interested in learning. Um, so if you go to my, click on my um, photo there and go to my um, channel homepage under playlists, you'll find the beginner basics playlist and it's in there um, under the bird video. And I think that that's the one that we, I showed how to do use a traceable and talked about it a little bit more in detail, but that's what I would do um, if you were letting your child um, do it, if you didn't want to draw it yourself, that kind of thing. Um, just use a traceable makes it super easy to do really any kind of um, thing that you want to do and with our dinosaur when I did the did you find the dinosaur pictures that I was okay no, I thought I you weren't listening when I was well, talking about you didn't give me your phone so. oh, okay let me find it really quick. Listening. okay All right. this time <laughs> you were listening for once okay Find the dinosaurs for me, please. All right, I'm leaving those in the water because I don't want them to dry out. This is this folder? Uh-huh. I'm just getting all this stuff out of my way here so I can work. Okay, so for my sunflower, I'm just going to do it in black and white. This is a very kind of like... Um, reminds me a little bit of like an Andy Warhol type print, you know, and that's why I use these kind of bright fun colors too. I thought that it would give it that kind of 60s vibe a little bit. And I'm just going to use carbon black. You can also grab yourself a paint pen. So I have multiple um, versions. Um, in a pinch, Sharpie will work. Sharpie, you just have to know, is going to end up fading over time. So you may end up having to um, redo it or, you know, just scrap it all together. But um, these are all the different. This is Montana, PBO, and uh, Posca, Uni, um, Posca. These are all really good pens for, they have acryl acrylic ink in them. So basically it's like drawing with acrylic ink. Um, makes it really, really easy to, and you, they come in all kinds of different colors too. So you can, you don't have to do black and white. All right. So when we did the, um, dinosaur series we did the background exactly the same as this and what I did is painted white around it so I left the design that he had painted and then I painted around it with my and I traced out uh, I actually drew with chalk my um, drawing of the um, dinosaurs and then painted around it carefully with white or black or whatever color you want for your background so that's another option that you can do um, with the same exact type of canvas, all right? Hopefully this is giving you guys some ideas. So <laughs> that's the whole thing. We got kids coming home from school soon and um, I know how that is. I've, we had three boys, so I was always trying to find things to do with them in the summer. And um, these kind of things are really fun to do. And I loved getting to do them with our grandson, Liam, he really loves art, so he's really into it. Even, I think, more so than my own kids were. I think I was less enthusiastic about it with my own kids because I was the one having to clean up the mess, you know, as much. 
<laughs> Not that I don't. I don't leave a mess, obviously. I'm just joking. But yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and... Oh, we're already an hour. Wow. Time flies. We haven't done a whole lot on our canvas there. Um, all right, so for our sunflower, we're just going to do a basic kind of circle in the middle here. I'm going to maybe go just a little bit off-center and up in the upper corner just so that I have room. I want to do a, a nice leaf right here in this corner coming out like this. I'm gonna do a big heart-shaped leaf and then that way I can kinda of know where I wanna put my center of my flower. So I think I'm gonna do my center kind of right in here. And usually the width of the center of your flower is going to be about equal to the, the length of your petals on a sunflower. So that's a good kind of rule of thumb if you um, you know have an image that you wanna use or, or um, that kind of thing, kind of your petals so it just kind of gives you an idea of sort of how far away from the edge you can go so that looks pretty good I think I'm going to do my center like right in here somewhere right like that and then um, if you want to what you can do is um, kind of make yourself a spoke through the center of it and that will kind of make sure that your petals are going in the right direction Right, because they all should be pointing down towards the center of your flower. So if you do that, then you know you can kind of start to build your petals out and make sure that they all kind of point back down towards the center. And I'm just going to do a whole series of petals here. And then I'm going to do a set of double petals. So I'll do another layer that's kind of in between. Um, peeking out here and there. Not all of them have to have another set of petals, but you get the idea. All right, and then let's go ahead and do a leaf coming out here. Maybe another one right here. So we'll do three leaves, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to do the stem or not. You can decide later. I might move it down a little bit, but I think that'll work. All right, so if you're using a pen, what you want to do is shake it with the cap on. I've learned that the hard way and splattered it all over myself. And then find a paper towel like a or a paper, right? piece of paper and just dab it onto the paper until that gets the ink flowing and then you can use it to draw in. This is probably the easiest way of doing this whole project is doing it like this with the pencil and then maybe some lines like that and then just go to your next one and draw that in and um, I like to put in, you know, some little imperfections in my petals so that they're not all same old, same old, but basically I'm going to go all the way around the flower and fill it in that way, all right? Or you can use a brush. I'm going to use a script liner. You want it to be fairly thin and use a thinned out paint. So I've got black here. This is just my fluid acrylic in black. And if you have acrylic ink, you can use that. But that is another way of doing this. And this will give it a little bit more of a painterly look. It's great practice for using a liner brush. Um, and you'll get a little bit more of a wider line, a little bit more of a varied line. Um, some thick, some thin lines. So it's just up to you, whatever you want to use. Um, I would say with kids, I would use the markers. You know, if you're going to have them do this particular part of it, and what you can do is do what I, I, I wouldn't use chalk with them probably. I would end up using um, the transfer paper and transfer on your design and then um, have them carefully outline using that um, outline design and 
this part I would say is probably not going to be as fun for the kids, <laughs> you know, unless you have a child that really likes to outline and, and draw, then maybe not. But um, for a three-year-old, you're probably not going to want them to do this part, you know, just saying, um, unless you have an exceptionally gifted three-year-old. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to kind of squiggle my outline of my center of my flower here, just using the tip of my brush and kind of creating some wiggly lines there. Okay. But this part is, I would just take your time. It's kind of meditative. I really like outlining like this, but I'm weird that way. So this really bothers you, I would use a pen, you know, um, it's just up to you. I want, the whole idea is for this to be fun, you know, don't stress. And I just like every now and then throwing in kind of a different technique like this, you know, this isn't something that we've done before on the channel, even though I've done it in my own personal life, you know, I don't know why I don't teach this stuff more often. So I'm like, I'm trying to kind of branch out and not just do the same old stuff every time. So if you guys like this and want to see more kind of kid-friendly designs this summer, let me know in the comments and I will for sure come up with some. I have some older ones that I did a long time ago and that's kind of how I started the channel actually is sharing some of the things that I was doing in my kids classes because um, I used to teach kids locally here um, just in private lessons and I love that. I really miss it. So I'm really excited that we have some granddaughters coming up too that <laughs> hopefully going to be wanting to do art. They're a little bit young for it yet, but <laughs> you know, we started Liam out pretty pretty young with watercolors. So I have a I have a I have a, a photo of him with two two paintbrushes doing watercolors with one brush in each hand, and he was probably one, I think. <laughs> So, cool. yeah, fun. So, I'm doing some like little, you know, little different things here too. Little kind of sideways petals, and they all should go in towards the center. And I'm going to kind of do some along the edges there, too, to just kind of create a little texture, maybe along the, you know, the, petal, the petals of the sunflower have lots of ridges, so. So this technique basically works with anything. Yeah, yeah, right? that's what I was saying. You could so use you could any, any photo. The hundreds of traceables you already have. Yeah. And find one 100%. that you like and then just yep. trace it on here and go. Yeah, yeah for sure. There was a sweet video sure. a couple years ago with a tank. You might be able to use that one <laughs> for an example. But just multiple things, just, just throwing out ideas. Yeah, and just you know, giving throwing people some thoughts. Some thoughts, on what could look good, mm -hmm. might might look good, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're um, if you're using a liner brush, let me just go over that. We did we did mention um, we had a um, we've been doing this series of different techniques, and this was part of it here. This tag twenty three textures for today's thing. If you do this, be sure to tag it with that hashtag on your social media. Um, but we started out with perspective mark making and value depth building mark mark making um, and brush stroke double loading and blending loosely and then um, three ways to blend and line work there we go that's the one I was looking for so we did line work um, back oh what I can't remember what video we did it on but it's um, so if you're looking for a little mini technique um, about line work, you might check that out because I talked a lot about line work. But basically what you're going to want to do is use a brush that has a good point to it, has good flexibility. Don't use your old weird watercolor brush that's all natty because you're not going to get a fine line with it. Um, you want to use a... Um, 
the longer the brush, the more paint it will hold, but the more difficult it might be to get around corners and things like that. So if you're not proficient with the liner brush, I would probably use a little bit shorter bristled one than, than what I'm using, maybe a short liner or a regular number one liner um, that has, this is a short liner to show you the difference there in the length of the hairs. Um, short liner, you're probably only going to be doing part of it and then reloading and doing another part. So, um, but you'll, you'll be able to control it a little bit easier. Um, so it's just kind of up to you, but basically you're wanting to hold it up above the, up above the area that you're painting and make sure that you're keeping it upright. So don't, I'm not going to try to do this line and curve it by holding it at a weird angle. I'm going to have to hold my wrist upright so that brush is perpendicular to the canvas. And I'm going to pull it in the direction that I want it to go. And I'm always keeping my hand up over that tip so that I can control where that tip of the brush goes. In this case, I'm just kind of closing that off there. So the... <clears throat> The line work was the Mushroom Garden video. The Mushroom Garden video, okay. And I posted a link in chat there. Oh, very good. Thank you. Cool. You're awesome. De nada. Gracias. Yeah. I wish I'd done this a little bit bigger, but the flower, like it's kind of not mm. filling it up a little bit. I feel like I've got room. Almost have room to do another smaller one, but or a bud or something. I might do a a bud over here. I could do that and have I don't know. I'm trying to think how it would look. fun and I like using the brush just because I can kind of control what is happening a little bit easier on the with the pen you're getting a um, a single width you know it's all unless you use a script liner of some sort that um, like um, where is it there we go. Like that, that's got um, a tip, a brush tip on a pen like that, where you can vary the width of the brush stroke. This is not acrylic though, so uh, it's a die. So it, um, even though it's permanent, um, you may have to spray it um, gently to make sure that it seals. This is the Sakura Pigma FBB Bold Black, I think, or Bold Brush, I think. Um, I used to use the fine brush to sign, and then they said that um, on canvas that it really doesn't seal very well, and so I'd, I'd found that to be true, too. So I stopped using it because I didn't want to recommend something that wasn't perfect for acrylics, you know. And I'd had people that said that they varnished their paintings and had it run. So yeah. that would be bad. <laughs> you know, you don't want that to happen. So anyhow, and I had had that happen to myself just a little, a few times. Not too bad, but enough that it was annoying. So somebody suggested maybe for the extra space, just paint the ends of the petals from another flower. But like you don't see the center. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, petals going off. I like that idea. Okay, let's do that. Good idea. Bonus points to whoever just said that. So, what? oh my goodness, I got paint. Look at what I did. Oh, got paint sure? on my shirt, and now it's on my canvas. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just another technique that you can <laughs> using use. your shirt. Using your shirt oh, to make create stamping. That. that would fall in the stamping, I would say, probably. 
<laughs> I actually really like the look of that though, so I think I might add some more of that um, on here. <laughs> That's hilarious. I just noticed. So, unintentional art happening. Mm. Accidental art. Accidental art. Hashtag accidental stamping. Love it. That's definitely something I, that's for real, real, real life right there. Cause that is a hundred percent what happens to me when I, especially when I'm working with kids, I had special art smocks that I would wear because I mean, not only would they, you know, art's just messy in general, but kids are, I mean, oh my gosh, I had one child uh, who shall not be named. But his name was started with a D and it ended with an Amian and was <laughs> appropriately named because he liked to paint on his his fellow um, part, partner's artwork. And so we did this string art thing. Oh, that was another one that I didn't show. We did string art where you dip the string into paint and then you put it on your canvas and it creates these kind of cool patterns and things. Um, and yeah, he was, hey, and we, and then we splattered and, yeah. and even though we had a special splatter station where they were controlled splattering, you know, in this box and everything, he would just, you know, of course it's me and and 10 kids. So I was outnumbered and I didn't have a helper. And so, um, he took advantage of it. it I, I, I never had to, to, um, kick a, kick a child out of my art class. <laughs> I almost did with him. <laughs> uh, he's probably 20 now, so hopefully he's, he's improved. <laughs> It was, it, we went to a wedding this, um, this, uh, weekend for one of my good friends, her daughter got married, or got married and, um, it was like old, old home, old home week because it was, there was, I think six girls there that had been in my art class mm -hmm. at one time or another when they were little. And this is probably at least 10 years ago, something like that. Oh, I mean, before my YouTube channel. So probably 12. 10 to 12, 15 years ago. Yeah, the, during that time period. So you can, you know, how much older they are. And I literally walked up to one of them and introduced myself. <laughs> Her mom, I was talking to her mom, and she walked up, and I'm like, hey, hi, I'm Angela Anderson. <laughs> did not recognize her at all. She, she kind of looked at her she mom, looked at, and looked at me, and, and looked, looked at you, looked at me, like, and she was uh, like, what am I supposed uh, to do? Hi, like, am I supposed to say, yeah, I know you, I was in your art class for three years? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I died laughing. Like, yeah, that was... I mean, so I, I hadn't changed. recognized her. You know, she wasn't in the class, but we went to church with them. Yeah, so we Who? knew, you know, we knew her and her brother right. growing up. But, but yeah, I yeah, mean, but, she was like eight the last time I yeah, saw her in my class. Right. <laughs> you know, 12, 15 years later. You're I like, know. Oh, and I hadn't seen her since. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was funny. At least we recognized her mom. Well, yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so funny. And I'm good friends with her dad too. That's the funny thing. Like he's a musician, and and shout out to Rob. Shout out to some guy named Rob. That's the name of his band. He's an awesome musician. All right, yeah, that was hilarious and embarrassing at the same time, <laughs> but not surprising. I mean, even didn't recognize her when she told me her name either. She was like, "Hi, I'm Bella." <laughs> <laughs> hey, hi, Bella. Oh, I knew a kid one named Bella. Bella. She was really good. And then, yeah. No, I do miss my kids' class. That was fun. That was a fun. They're they're the reason I do I'm doing what I'm doing now days because I. My first YouTube videos that I shared were things that I had been doing with them, you know. So it's pretty cool. Small world. 
small, small decisions of, you know, sharing my, doing a video of some of the projects that we'd been doing together in art class and turned into a whole yeah. new career for me. Yeah, it's amazing. And then we got to amazing. see all these great new friends from all over the world. I know. I know. It's amazing. Settle, Fitzy. Fitzy, no. No. Come here. Be good. Thank you. Good boy. Okay. So just kind of doing this. No. This whole area back in here, like there's an area in the middle right here, a circle that is pretty open, but then the rest of this is pretty solidly black. So I'm going to fill that in a little bit more. No. Uh oh. Shh. Stop. Stop it. I know. I know. Fitz, Fitz, Fitzy's going to doggy boot camp in a few weeks. This In May. He's going to be gone for three weeks, and he's going to be learning how to walk on a leash how and how to behave around strangers and other dogs. So that'll be interesting. I'm going to be really sad because I'm going to miss him, but hopefully we'll get back a dog that doesn't doesn't bark at kids and strollers and stuff like that. <laughs> I tried to pick a fight with a, somebody's dog at the tulip field, so we had to take him back. He gets, he just gets super excited. He's, he's not like aggressively mean. He's just like, he gets excited and he barks and it scares people and other dogs don't react well to it. All right, so there we go. I don't know. I kind of, yeah, it looks all right. I think it's okay. I think it's good. All right. Yeah, let's do some. Let me think here. <clears throat> I'm gonna sketch it so that I get an idea of what, it, what, where we place things. So let's do one here. That's maybe, maybe the center is off. Here we're not. We're just barely seeing. So. They would be facing in. But I don't want it to be on a level, so I think I want it up higher. Like I don't want them side by side. So maybe have it up here. Something like that. Like there. And then this one coming down here with the heart shaped leaf coming over. And then maybe, maybe some more petals over here. doing on time oh yeah we're plenty plenty good on time i know this isn't like super exciting this part of it because i'm just talking and painting so okay well it's not too exciting you yeah, know what i said what do you think that's not too exciting well i mean i'm just doing the same thing over okay. and over again just repetitive well then we'll just talk about patreon there we go there you go you want to talk about it what do you want me to talk about it you can talk about okay. it okay so thank you, first off, to all the supporters on Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. And it's, uh, you go to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. And right now there's different levels where you can support the channel and get some extras. So at the $2 level, you get the traceables for all of the YouTube videos on here going back to February 2017. Then there's a $5 level where you get those traceables, plus you get a bonus video which is done once a month and that'll be this weekend we'll be working Ooh. on a boat a, 
a book that's open with flowers and butterflies and things coming out of it. Uh, flowers and butterflies. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited. So, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the reference images and traceables and all that that go yeah. with that. And yeah. again, all the way back, not just this month, but all the previous ones. Right. And then the $10 level is all of that plus a challenge image where she paints each Thursday. She just works on the same painting for several weeks until it's done. So it's mm-hmm. a little bit more detail, a little bit more content. Show that one. We're almost done with it. I think we've got at least two more weeks, but at least maybe one to two more weeks. We're almost done. We've got this corner to do and a little bit up here. So I'm a seahorse and another fish to do, but... That's the challenge image. And these ones are usually multiple weeks, like Mark was saying. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, check it out. And, again, thank you so much to everybody who continues the support. It's awesome. And I'll have the traceable for this one um, probably tomorrow or tonight, late tonight, depending on when I can Dep- get posted. Depending on how exciting Oak Island is. And if I can get it done in or not. If they discover the hidden treasure from all the world civilizations. I may, I may be too excited to, to do it. That's probably going to happen. Right. I think I'm realizing that we've been suckered. <laughs> we've been suckered all these years. We've been watching this show and I don't think there's any treasure. They keep just promising. It's kind of like Skin Rock or Ranch. Not to... Not to don't leave me mean comments if Skinwalker Ranch hey, is your, hey, if you're is your into, jam. If you're into ox shoe nails, well, then you've been more than happy. <laughs> I found a ton of those. <laughs> All right, so I'm halfway thinking I'm just going to leave it. Ooh, what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind, yeah. of, kind of happy after doing the leaves. Um, oh. I don't know. I, I kind of... Even though hummingbirds don't go for... Oh. Sunflowers, or maybe... Could do a little bee, but bee. I don't have a photo of it right now. I don't want to... This is don't too photorealistic to mess with. What? Yeah, you don't want to go off the rails here. Right. I, I'm liking what I've got, so I don't want to mess it up. Let me just wipe off all my chalk. About me with the painting. I can see what what I want to do. I do want to add some more of this blue, though, because I've got it right here and nowhere else. So, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to quit there. I, I, I like it. I think it doesn't need the I'm going to whoops. See now I messed that up. I I'm going to have to paint that back in. I touched over it when it was wet, and I lifted it off. Okay. Okay, there we go. I might do just a little like a little leaf coming out just like a half half leaf or something that's sort of like that I'm all excited because our blueberry bush this year has lots of flowers on it lots of flowers lots of bees man the bees bees are going crazy on it it's about the only flowering thing in the area. It's yeah, and then they're like, just like gnawing yes. on it. So and, the awesome. humming, and the hummingbirds are coming back. Yeah. Seen a couple at the feeders. Yeah. The weather's it's starting changing. to look like spring. Yeah. It's pretty cool. All right, there we go. So very simple. Kept it really simple. Didn't add a lot of detail to the leaves or the petals or anything. Just very easy hopefully you guys like this and will try it or something similar be sure to share it on your social media if you do because i'd love to see it and um, i'm gonna add nope it's not that color it's this one this ultramarine blue and white and i'm just gonna add big big oops 
splatters to it. Ooh. I'm just going to act like we meant to do splatters all over it. There we go. Fun stuff. Oh, I like that blue against it, too. It makes it really pop. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Let me know which technique you're going to try or which one was your favorite out of all the 12 different um, surface texture techniques that I showed here um, tonight. And, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, we'll see our patrons, our $5 and up patrons, for our bonus video this weekend. But otherwise, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.